Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, today I am working on uh, a special base for one of these Molochs that I'm working on. Um, he's going to be rising from a swamp, so I'm creating a base uh, that has some depth to it that's going to be roughly the size of the large oval base. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I figured I'd go ahead and do some work um, while we chatted. Uh, that way I can feel like I'm, I'm moving forward on a project that I feel like I might be a little behind on. Uh, so, but one of the things I wanted to talk about today, actually I have several things I want to talk about today, but one of them is uh, some new games that are coming out that I'm excited about. And I'm going to mention two of them in particular because they both uh, recently released. Uh, the first is Frostgrave. And Frostgrave, for those of you who don't know, is a rule set from, uh, from Osprey. And if you didn't know, Osprey is a company that is more well known for making... Um, well, that didn't get scored enough. They're more well known for making books about historical subjects. Uh, usually for like a modeler and gamer target audience, but for the last couple of years they've been publishing their own miniatures rule sets and uh, doing really well with them actually. Two, three. Uh, the so Frostgrave is the latest one, and Frostgrave is, for lack of a better term for it, and probably the easiest way to describe it is that it is, in, in many ways, the rebirth of Mordheim. So that is, it is a fantasy skirmish game uh, set in a ruined city or town, and where the... Uh, players make up a war band. I'm just not scoring these things enough. Making up a war band of characters who go to essentially loot this town. And it has a campaign system where the certain characters can actually get better over time and increase in their abilities uh, and you can hire new guys and guys can die off and so you know campaign system as, as one might expect from a campaign system um, but I've been excited about it because Mordheim was for a long time one of my favorite games workshop games and it wasn't because it was a games workshop game I just liked that idea of this plucky band of, of warriors fighting off other warriors in a ruined town. I don't know I don't know what it is about that that I liked, but I did. And so when I heard about this, I got excited about it, and I pre-ordered it, and it's supposed to be in pretty much any day now, but it's shipping from the UK to the US, and so that's obviously going to take a little time. Uh, I know some guys in the US have already gotten their copies, and that makes me angry. Uh, but what are you going to do? Now, if you wanted to take a look at it, so like I said, Osprey makes the rule book, but North Star Miniatures, North Star Games, North Star Miniatures out of the UK, I guess Osprey is out of the UK as well, uh, make the, the miniatures for it. Um, Luckily, it is one of those games that you could easily use any fantasy mini miniatures to go with it. It doesn't have to be the official ones, but the official ones are pretty cool, and they have um, uh, some nice wizards, because uh, generally when you build a warband for this, you're going to have a wizard and his apprentice, uh, and then a number of uh, warriors to go with it. Uh, various types. And then you might need uh, summoned creatures and monsters and things like that to finish it off. And it doesn't have to be the official ones. Uh, and in some cases, like some of the wizards are okay, some of them not so much. 
but their box set of warriors that they have, they have a plastic box set of warriors, is fantastic. Uh, and I think I'll have a, an image up somewhere. Uh, but the... Yeah, the warriors... Definitely the best. That's, that looks about right. The warriors are the best of the bunch. All right. Um... Still figuring this thing out. Uh, just as an aside, what I'm doing is I'm uh, I'm creating a base that is hollowed out in the middle, sort of like a recessed uh, privateer best press base. Uh, and I'm doing it out of layers of styrene because I have lots and lots of it just sitting around. Um, and I guess I could have started with the base, but this way I can also make it a little bulkier which is good, but I still want to keep the general size roughly the same as this, so... Anyway, okay, so back to Frostgrave. Um, the Plastic Warriors look great. The other Metal Minis are kind of hit and miss, um, but it, they do have the benefit of having some things that are somewhat specific, um, or maybe a little bit harder to find uh, outside, of their, uh, outside of their product line, but Definitely worth a look. Okay, I think I'm going to glue all these together. So that came out last week, or possibly the week before. I don't know that there was a hard release date on that uh, from Osprey and Northstar. And then... Uh, oh, I don't know why I did that. And it's taking a little while to sort of work its way over here to the U.S. So if you look around, you'll see some reviews from people who have already gotten their copies. Bastards. Uh, but I have not seen mine yet. But I plan on doing a full review when that comes available. I might even do a... Uh, a walkthrough video. I haven't done one of those in a while and I really want to. But, so the other game that's coming out, and today is the official release date, and that is uh, the Halo Fleet Battles. This could be a little taller. I could do a little bit more. Uh, and Halo Fleet Battles, today is the official release date. And as you might imagine, if you don't know anything else at all about it, it's, uh, it's a Starship combat game set in the Halo universe. And if you're like me, the first thing you think when you, when you hear about a Starship combat game in the Halo universe is, why are you doing a Starship combat game in the Halo universe and not a ground combat game? Uh, not that there's a problem with that, because I'm, I'm buying it, uh, or I should say I've already purchased it. I, I pre-ordered it, and I'm hoping that that comes in this week. But again, it depends on when it shipped out into the distribution in the U.S. So maybe this week, maybe next week. But anyway, they, there is a ground combat game for Halo in the works, and this is from Spartan Games. Uh, and so if, if your thought is, well, I really just want to play a ground combat game, well, give it some time. There will be one. And if you look around on the web, uh, you will find pictures of some of their um, prototype minis, which are pretty nice. Um, but anyway, so it's a Starship Combat game. Why, why did I buy it if I, my first reaction was, huh? Uh, and that's, well, uh, I think possibly because I'm a kind of a Halo fanboy and partially because when I saw pictures of the painted minis from Salute this year, uh, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> they look fairly amazing. So, 
in a way. Uh, like, I, I just really enjoy doing starships, and I think part of that is just because I like sci-fi in general, and part of that is because I did spend 11 months painting uh, starships on Starship Troopers and really enjoyed that project. And so anytime I have an opportunity to paint something like that, it sort of takes me back. Um, but, so I pre-ordered it before I even knew that much about it, other than the fact that it was made by Spartan Games. And let me tell you, my opinion on Spartan Games other games is not great. Um, I got Uncharted Seas, which was their first game, which I think everybody was kind of hoping was going to be the new um, uh, Man of War, which is the old Games Workshop fantasy naval combat game, which was really fun, super fantastic, and everybody kind of wanted that uh, Uncharted Seas to be that, and it wasn't that. It was fun, but it wasn't deep. Uh, it, there was a lot of dice rolling, a lot of kind of wacky randomness, and in the end, you, it was it was like ship combat. You know, you'd set up a line of battle, and the two sides would go at each other and shoot until and roll dice until somebody was dead. That's fine, but it wasn't a game that I wanted to play a ton of, but it was still fun. And so over the years, I've been kind of keeping an eye on the stuff they're doing, but not really investing any of them. Uh, Dystopian Wars looks interesting, but you know, from reviews it appears it has its own problems. Uh, their Starship Combat game, whose name constantly escapes me. Um, the minis look fantastic, but again, it, it, it doesn't look like what I was looking for. In fact, it, it reminds me a bit of Uncharted Seas. With, to, to be fair, you know, more um, development done on the rules in all those years, so it's not like they haven't learned anything in that time but not enough for me to get really excited about it. Uh, so when I, when I pre-ordered uh, Halo Fleet Battles, Fleet Battles, yes, that's right, uh, I wasn't really expecting much, and, and I think it was partly, you know, Halo fanboyism, and partly uh, I like starships, and partly I did have fun with our Uncharted Seas. So my expectation was that uh, I would get this game, I would paint the models, I'd have fun doing that, uh, and I'd play a few times and probably be done. And so that would either mean that I really like the ships and I hang on to them, uh, or I sell them off, as I do with so many of my, <laughs> my own personal projects. And then I saw the Beast of War video yesterday, and I'll, I'll provide a link in the description. Uh, they, they covered the game for about an hour and a half, and I learned a whole bunch of things that um, have made me excited, and now I can't wait to get it. So the first thing I learned was that this is not based on their other Starship Combat game. I think it still uses the same core die mechanic, but that doesn't really mean a lot. Um, because whereas uh, their other game is focused on a handful of ships on either side, this is a true fleet battle system. Uh, they were apparently testing the game at, at the outer edges of it with 300 or more minis per side. And that's a lot of minis. <laughs> Uh, considering the starter box comes with 49, which I felt like was a lot until I heard that, you know, it can handle a lot more. Uh, so that's different. Uh, the other thing, and in, in this case, some of the specifics that kind of got me excited about it were the fact that um, uh, their commander system. So in addition to building your fleet, uh, you're going to pick a commander uh, for your fleet. You know what? Oh, yeah. You're going to pick a commander for your fleet, and that commander has a command card. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever played Saga, but if you've ever played Saga, the command cards for the commanders are very much like the battle boards for Saga. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, it works like this. 
The command, the, the command card has uh, a series of special actions on it. And then it has uh, a representation of uh, die facings next to it based on the, the command dice. It's a special kind of picture die that comes with the game, comes with the starter set. And at the beginning of your turn, you're going to roll your command dice and then assign those dice to one or more of those abilities that you can then utilize during your turn. So some of those die facings, I think like the one and the six perhaps, um, they're harder to get and you might have some sort of kind of uber ability that requires multiple dice of that facing. So perhaps four of one that's really hard to get and you're gonna roll you know, four or five dice. I, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, so the chances of you, of, you know, rolling all those right from the beginning is really small. Uh, so you can set dice aside onto that ability so that next time you can continue to add to it or maybe you get enough that you actually get that ability and then you can kind of do that uber ability during the turn when you finally have enough. And that is very, very much like Saga. It's also very, and it's a, it's a system that I really enjoy. So the other thing that I saw that I got excited about in this video was the fact that when you build a fleet, it's not like you're just purchasing ships And once you've purchased all your ships, you're done. Uh, you also get to configure them into, uh, I think the smallest group is called an element. So for example, uh, you might have three frigates on a stand, but you might have a couple of different configurations that you can place them on the stand. And that will tell you uh, whether or not they might be better at firing missiles or better at firing the Mac cannons uh, or things like that. And your larger ships, you might send them out alone or they might have uh, an escort on their base and that has its own set of meanings and differences. And I don't, they didn't go into great detail about what that meant, but I like that, um, that extra layer because it provides um, a, you know, a more sort of kind of visual interest to the game as well as an extra added layer of depth beyond just what ship am I going to buy and what stuff does it have. So I find that exciting and I'm really interested in seeing how that plays out. Is it, uh, do I think it's going to be a great game? I have no idea. Um, but I'm far more hopeful now than I was when I first heard about it. Uh, so on top of that, uh, the minis look fantastic. Uh, unpainted out of the box, it's a little bit more like getting uh, board game minis because they're, they're all molded in color. So you have the Covenant are in this sort of red-purple and the uh, UNSC are all in a gray. And they showed them all uh, assembled and sitting up on the table. And I felt like I could play a game with them unpainted and not feel weird. Like, I, you know, you bring this to the table and I would just feel wrong. <laughs> it just, this, this isn't the way this is meant to be put out on the table. But those, because of the way that they already look out of the box, it almost looks more like you're playing with board game pieces and that's not bad. And it was intentional, of course, on their part, because they really want to have this wide potential for the audience. So not just, uh, not just war gamers, not just previous miniatures gamers, but uh, anybody who's interested in the Halo universe at all. They want them to be able to uh, try the game out and get something out of it and not have that same barrier to entry that 
most miniatures games have. You know what I'm talking about. So, um, so yeah, that's it for, well, that's it for the games that I'm getting soon. So let me tell you about something else that I just got. And this isn't going to be a full review. I'll save that for later, and I haven't worked with them enough yet. Um, but it, this is sort of a, a preview review. And these are the WAMP, I guess that's how you say it, WAMP, uh, Kickstarter brushes. And I did the Kickstarter and just got these last week and have been using them ever since. And I just got the, the, the most basic set you could get, which includes the base coat, base coat brush, fine detail brush, freehand brush, and detail brush. And so far, I'm very pleased with these brushes. Um, the two things I need to do before I do a full review, and one is um, get some more use out of them. Uh, sometimes the, the, the brushes don't reveal themselves to you fully until you've actually had your hands on them for a while. But my initial impression is these are quite nice. Uh, but the other thing I need to find out is, I don't know what these retail for. Uh, I spent, I think, something like $35, $40, I can't remember, on, on these four brushes. And uh, for high quality brushes, that's a really good price. And already for based on my initial reactions to using them, it's actually a really good price because I find them to be um, at definitely the higher end of brushes that I've used on the short term. So I don't know if that's going to be the same, uh, you know, a month from now. But I need to know what the retail price is because that's part of the issue is that you're always looking for uh, uh, quality for value. I am willing to spend a premium of money on a premium brush because I find it worth the expense. And so my normal brushes are the Winsor Newton Series 7, which I think for brushes of this size, I would spend somewhere between uh, maybe 15 and $17 on, depending on where I get it and the time of year and who's got them and what discounts they're doing. Uh, so if at the end of the day, these brushes work out to being about 10 bucks a piece. And that's pretty good. But part of the value is like, how long do they last? And that's only gonna reveal itself over time. Now, the nice thing is, unlike the other brushes that I got in the Kickstarter, and I can't even remember who did those. Um, it doesn't matter. But in any case, you know, you know who it is. They, they've done two Kickstarters on brushes, and the first one did not go well, and the second one, um, people have been happier with, but I would say that the brushes are, they're okay, but they're not great. Uh, and these brushes, uh, on the other hand, are super high quality. Now the thing is, rather than making them themselves, and the other company did make it themselves, uh, these were actually manufactured by Rosemary and Company out of the UK, and Rosemary and Company are a brush manufacturer, and they make really nice brushes. I've actually used their Series 22 brushes, which are super inexpensive for Kalinsky Sable brushes. But uh, I found them to be a little bit on the stiff side of what I like. But I have decided that they're really small. Um, this is a zero. So I've decided that the zero of the Series 22 is a, now a regular part of my painting arsenal. And the reason for that is um, it is a fine brush. I don't normally like brushes that are this fine, um, but it, its tip is a little bit blunter than most of the other, like even these. Uh, these have very, very you know, razor sharp tips. This one has just a little bit more of a blunt tip, and that is really helpful when doing some details, specifically eyes. I find eyes really tough to do uh, with a fine, super pointy brush. I need to have a little bit of a bulk right at the tip. 
um, and not even really just for doing the the eyeball itself, but for doing irises, um, being able to have a little bit more bulk so that you can almost just dot the eye or even just dab it a few times as opposed to having to draw a circle with it is a lot easier to do and that's why this brush has become uh, standard. And so um, I want to know what what it's going to cost me to get these in the future and whether or not uh, that's going to be worthwhile for me. I mean, the thing is the WAMP is not a company that has wide distribution in the U.S. that I'm aware of. So, uh, you know, on top of the cost of the brushes is the shipping, which I can tell you from buying the Rosemary and Company brushes is not insignificant. <laughs> These brushes are super cheap on their own, uh, but the shipping tends to double the price, which is always annoying. Even if it means like you're still getting what you feel like is a good deal, the fact that so much of that money is going to just shipping is really annoying. So, so there's that. So that was, those were the things that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, right now I'm working on um, five lictors, three Molochs, and a Death Leaper, and I'm doing, working on this base uh, so that I can have one of these guys rising from the swamp. And so that's, that's what I'm doing uh, on a... <laughs> I, there's a cricket, so it makes me feel like nobody's listening. Uh, that's what I'm working on right now. I just got finished uh, doing a whole bunch of uh, chaos things, some heralds of Zinch and some chaos space marini guys and uh, tech priest Dominus, which is an amazingly cool figure. Uh, and I have some plans for uh, upcoming videos. Uh, one of that one of our Patreon subscribers specifically asked for something about approaching uh, a glow effect. And while I didn't have a good project to do that video for at the moment, I've got my eye out for uh, things where I can do that. And because he's a Patreon subscriber, that is high on my list. And so if it's not the next video, it will be very, very soon after the next video because you're a subscriber, you get priority. <laughs> Which reminds me, Patreon, if you want to support the videos, definitely head over there. There's a link in the description. You can head right over. Every little bit helps. Uh, we do it on a per video basis. So don't feel bad if you're just pitching in a dollar. That's a dollar per video. It'd be like four bucks a month. Um, you can actually set a maximum. So if you're like, you know what, I really want to do this amount, but I'm afraid he's going to do 17 videos in one month. Don't worry about it. Cap it. Set the cap wherever you want, where you feel comfortable, uh, on a, on a monthly basis and you'll never get charged more than that. But it's all helpful. The, the more subscribers we get, the more money I'm making from the videos, the more effort and the more effort I can put into the videos and you get to tell me what you would like to see. And I actually take that into account. But this month I hadn't done one of these vlogs and so I felt like it was, it was time to, uh, to just chat. I actually really like doing this. So I'm going to get to work and get this thing done and maybe you'll get to see it later. Uh, and so that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you all later.